tell as a monkey and not act like a monkey. <laughs>
that you like, so you pull that back out, and that led you down the search in Apple Music. And you done went back to your old ways when your pastor has told you, taught you, prepared you, told you there's no way, there's no way you're going to listen to the devil's music without it affecting your life. And I'm going to ask you a question, those of you that keep listening to the devil's music. Look at your life. Thank you. That's all you got to do. Look at your life. Look at it. Look at it. Been doing this too long, man. I ain't got time for that. You don't like it? Get out. Leave. Bye. But look at your life. It reflects what you listen to. Y'all think I'm playing? Been doing this how long? When I was listening to it, my life was jacked up. Oh, some folk can't clap, Elder. They can't clap! Like it's going to bother me. So, the whole thing was these, these boys, they, they didn't want to replicate who their father was. That's why our black boys decorate themselves that way and look that way. They pierce their ears. They got the gangster, the grill, the sag. And the, the, they're trying to distance themselves from masculinity. Because masculinity is a reminder who they're a descendant of. Yeah. If they're not happy with their descent, yeah. yes, sir. then they're going to try to modify themselves right. instead of replicate. Right. Yeah. But all men want to replicate themselves. You want your son to look like you. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. I'm flattered. Folk tell me, man, you and Landon walk just alike. You know, I was like, good. I got these muscles just so I would look like him more. I want him to look like me. Amen. I want him. I want Jonathan. Now, Jonathan ain't built like me. But I want him to look like me. I want people to see me in him. I want him to be a replica. I want him to be a descendant. I want him to repeat. And obtain a consistent result. Now, he got his own path. Landon's got his own path. So their lives are different in terms of their own paths. But I still want a consistent result. I want them to know how to trust God for their future like their father did. And mistakes I made, I, want, I don't want them to make. Ain't that why we in here? Why would I be dragging out some old mint condition for them to listen to? When mint condition conditioned me to do stupid stuff. I almost went to hell behind music. In the church. Amen. So, you want to replicate. Amen. The church of God is ordained to stand during these last and evil days. Y'all believe that? Yeah. Jesus blessed the church, rebuked and chastened it. And then what did he do? Gave restoration methods to it so that it could continue until his return. This is why there's no end to the church age. Because when Jesus rebuked the church in Revelations, he rebuked the church, but then he gave them restoration methods. This is what you do to fix it. Fall in love with me again. Do what you did first. Do the first works. He, he, all of those things he said, they were restoration methods. He's not going to do away with church. No. The church... Listen, if he does away with church, then there's no need for a rapture. Somebody said, well, the rapture, you know, that's the word rapture is not in the Bible. It just means caught away. So let's don't use rapture. There'd be no need to caught, be caught away. He said he's coming back in the twinkling of an eye. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Those that remain shall be what? caught up to meet him in the air 
Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we will be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when the trump of God sounds. That's, look at somebody say, that's Bible. Whoa, I feel the anointing on that. That's Bible. Look at somebody say, I'm ready to go. Come get us, Jesus. <laughs> the world is not my home, so I'm not getting too comfortable here. There's a better place. There's a better place, Elder. You can keep this stuff. You can keep fighting to get a house and a car and live on the... You can keep doing that if you want to. But I'm sending my timber up. See, they don't know what that means. I'm sending up the timber. That means I'm building a heavenly home. I'm doing things now so that I will have a better place to go. I'm preparing myself and my family for that great and terrible day. When the sky will split in half. No time to be sitting down here. Boy, I am not in love with this stuff down here. Amen. It all come with a price. You fall in love with the world, the world comes with a price. Amen. You folks that love the world, I'm going to be out of here. Y'all going to all be wearing the same thing, eating the same thing. That's in every sci-fi movie. Every glimpse of the future, everybody's wearing the same thing and eating the same thing. He said that the gates of hell. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave restoration. He said that the gates of hell will not defeat the church. And we must make sure that we are poised to what? Fight, Fight for it and not against it. Yeah. Amen. It's some folks so emotional about everything that they're taking church for granted. They want church to feel what they, they want to feel, they want to change the way church feels. They come to church worried about how they feel, their feelings. Don't you understand that Jesus is coming back for the church? He's not coming back for the world. He's coming back for the church. Well, the church is in us. No, you in the church. You got to get in the church. Matthew 16 and 18, and I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Yeah. And what's going to happen? Shall yeah, the gates ain't touching God's church. No, they're not going to prevail. The devil's not going to stop what God is coming back for. He's coming back for the church. Amen. He ain't coming back for the Hebrews on the corner. He ain't coming back for the internet, folks. He's coming back for the church. You done let somebody talk you out of being a part of the church. Now you against God's church? And he's coming back for the church? In order for the church to continue, it has to what? That's what this is. Look around you. ABC replicated itself. From the time we were in my house and it was 20 people. Look what it's grown to. 800 folks. That's replication. Now everybody in here ain't completely replicated. You know how you take that copy on the paper and pull it out too soon and only half of it and then the rest is just kind of deformed and squiggly. That's some folks. You ain't, you, we didn't make a good enough copy. You took it out before the light passed all the way. <laughs> Amen. But hey, hang around. We'll run another copy. It's more paper in there. That machine's still on. It's more paper. Hang around. We'll get a better, we'll get a better replication. 
Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Some of us was that deformed copy. You can't do nothing with that but make a paper airplane out of it. That's all that's good for. Amen. <laughs> but the church has to replicate itself. We must win souls, disciple, and reach out to the lost consistently and what? Effectively. For God's kingdom to grow and be sustained. When I stand before God, I want God to say, little G, real little G, like littlest G. That's me in front of God, little G, almost not their G. We must, I want him to say, you won souls. You discipled. And then you reached out to the lost consistently, consistently and effectively. Well done. That's what I want to hear. And that's why I'm not working for you. And I'm not working for your emotions. Sometimes I got to bypass your emotions. Like the old folks you say, and deal with the thingy thing. I have to bypass the emotions so that I can get to the consistent and effective part. So I can know that I've done my part, but they decided this wasn't for them. Amen? And you need to be the same way with your family, with your relatives, everybody. Hey, I did my part. I extended grace. I extended mercy. I extended love. I was there for them. I did it. You know, some folk don't care if you're there for them or not. They still going to stab you in the back no matter how much you've been there for them. Oh, that hurts. You don't remember. You forgot. But yeah, but no matter what, God, don't, God is not worried about what they did. He's worried about what you did. Did you extend a heart of love? You call yourself adamant believers council? Are you adamant about love? Love is the foundation. You haven't loved? Amen. I don't want no church where folk can't love. We can just make this a ball game. Push the church back. Put a goal over there and a goal over there. If we just going to be gathering. But I want to stand before God and I want to know my conscience is clear. Man, I've had the opportunity to sit at the deathbed with several people that were strong in the faith. Bishops and pastors, a different ones, strong in the faith. And man, before they all left here, they all told me, I'm good with God. I'm good with God. Man, I want to be able to say that good with God yeah I showed love when I was opposed to 2 Corinthians I mean 2 Thessalonians 2 and 15 therefore brethren stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught whether it's by word or whether it's by our epistle in these last days you're going to have to stand fast and hold tr to the traditions we're not moving the line y'all in here the line stays we're not moving the line. The line stays. We're the same Adam and Believers Council that we were 10 years ago. The line stays. The people may change, but the line stays. Because we're holding fast. That's what it means. We must fight the attacks of the enemy against the church and make sure that we stand for it in the last hour. Yes, sir. I love this. The separation of church and hate. Yes. <laughs> Folks forget that this is God's church. God's church. If you're here and you don't believe that this is God's church and that he's here right now in his, his presence is here, you're in the wrong place because then you're not going to have respect for what is being said then everything that is being said going to run through your ridiculous optional mind and I can kick this out and keep this and kick this, that's ridiculous the Bible said we got to all be on one accord or the presence of the Lord ain't going to be here day of Pentecost the Holy Ghost made its grand entrance because they were all on one accord
Can I keep preaching in here? Yeah, that's how we, we got to fight the attacks of the, uh, against the church and make sure that we stand for it in this last hour. The whole world is against Christ's church. They ain't against Buddha. They're not against Allah. LGBT month. This old nasty month. They down there pole dancing on crosses. Buddha didn't die on a cross. Allah didn't die on a cross. Naked men pole dancing on a cross. And have Jesus on there. And dancing on him. On a cross. That's not Buddha. They dancing on. But you know what that does for me, Elder? That tells me everything. That tells me I'm right, Jay Bryant. That tells me I got the right one, David. That, that, that tells me I serve the risen Savior. That they ain't gonna get on the dead one's death. They ain't gonna mess with the dead ones. They're messing with the one that's still alive. Jesus is alive. So even in their state nastiness, they testifying of something. That the true and living God yet lives. We got a problem with him because he's still alive and he can do something to us. They ain't worried about no dead gods. But the whole world is against Christ's church. And by the whole world, I mean offended church folks. That's the, that's the greatest enemy of the church. Offended church folks, because they, they don't care. If they don't like it, it's not God, and they just start dogging it. Not knowing that they're putting their hands on God's people and getting blood on their hands. You can't get that mad. But offended church folks liberals witches devils and atheists are all doing what man if i look up and i'm chatting something and i look up and a witch and an atheist is next to me chatting the same thing i'm gonna be like uh, <laughs> let me go over here <laughs> i'm not unite with them for nothing anything they together on i'm against that's a witch and a devil. I can't be with the witches and the devils. You mean you with the witches and the devils fighting the church? <laughs> they are uniting together in an attempt to stop the church of God and end its existence. Matthew 24 and 10 says, and then shall many be what? Amen. Jesus prophesied it. They're going to be offended. They're going to betray one another. Going to hate one, uh, one another. Why are you going to a church and you, 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 you always talking about the leadership? What you doing, man? Go fishing. Boy, it's some good old crappie in the Lake Louisville. <laughs> crappie. Man, you could be fishing right now. You don't even have to... Man, they come in and hear my voice and get angry, Sister Stacy. Angry hearing my voice, but you still come. Don't do that. Man, go fishing. Bowling, the bowling alley open at 12. You can go have breakfast. Movie theater. What time the movie theater open? Go watch a movie. Man. No, I'd be like, if I'm watching a movie on a Sunday, I'd be scared whatever I'm watching is going to come out of the screen and get me. Mario, I don't care, the cart. They just gonna drive off the screen and start driving through the aisles. I, I don't wanna see no movie while church is going on. That would haunt me. But I'm saved, so if you ain't really saved. Fishing. You know the old folks, you say, you go fishing on Sunday, you go catch the devil. Remember they said that? You go catch the devil. Going back, he ain't going back. <laughs> ah, you shouldn't have been out here. <laughs> but 
But many going to be offended. They're going to betray one another. They're going to hate one another, according to Jesus. And man, we are here. They all get together against God's church because they want to stop it. The fellowship of the collective body of saints is the church of God. Though we are all individual temples of the Holy Ghost, we are the church collectively that the Holy Ghost created, inspired by Jesus Christ himself. So don't use that, oh, well, we, I'm the church. I'm the, first of all, you not the church. You're not. And then you join a church, you become a church. That's in the Bible. Why folks keep trying to do stuff that's not in the Bible? Where did you get that from? Where did you get that from? They went to church in the Bible. When a church was created, they went to church. Then when the church started wilding and acting up, Jesus came and rebuked, all, rebuked six of the seven. Yes, sir. But he didn't end them. He didn't destroy them. He didn't burn them up. He just told them to change. Why? Because he's a merciful God. So every now and then we come in here and tell everybody to change. We all get used to stuff. You get desensitized to the word if you hear it too much. So God got to come in here, bring an evangelist or something have to happen. Bust everybody up and bring you back to reality so that you'll do the first works. Remember the reason why you fell in love with this ministry? Remember the reason why? What pricked your heart about it? The truth behind hip hop? Yeah, all, remember that version of you? Now you're sitting back just chilling in the cut. Now you got to do the first works. Amen. We got to turn the fire back up. Amen. Ain't nobody going for a big church. We want to save church. Amen. The church of God will represent the body of Christ until he returns. Did you hear that? It's not going to end. It's not going to end. Church age don't end until he comes and gets the church. So, we must check our ideas, motives, behaviors, and opinions at the door and submit to the plan of the Lord for us to gather together. Look at somebody and say, check it at the door. Look at somebody and say, check your feelings at the door. See, and here's the thing about feelings. How has that worked for you? How has your feelings worked for you? Every time you felt the feeling and obeyed it, did it turn out good? No. So we check our feelings at the door and we do what God tells us to do. Amen. We submit to the plan of the Lord. That's Adam and Believer's counsel. There is a plan. We submit to that plan or we just stop coming. And it will be okay. James gives us the correct posture that we as the church should operate in. James 1 and 19 starts off. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man at ABC <laughs> be swift to what? Yeah. Here. Slow to what? Yeah. And then slow to what? Yeah. Swift to hear. Slow to speak. Slow to rap. If you did this, you'd stay out of trouble. If you did this, you'd have some friends. You're in a church full of folks and don't have no friends. Have you noticed you? Because you can't do this. You're getting one of these wrong. But if you can do this, you can have friends. Swift to hear. Quiet. What you say? What you say, Pastor? Oh, that hit me. Oh, man. He talking about me. Don't send me no email. I know you was talking about me. Because I'm going to say, probably. Jay Bryan taught me that because I used to always say, man, I'm not talking about you. There's too many people in here. But he would always say, but what if you are? You're the pastor. What if he is? So I'm taking your stand now, Jay. Thank you for that. See? 
Yes, I might be talking about you. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes I'm preaching, I'm talking about me. Amen. I was boots and overcoat in my office preparing some of these sermons. <laughs> Sackcloth and ashes. But that's what the word does. It regenerates. It changes us. It fixes us. Amen. So I'm going to preach it. Because I want to go to heaven. Anybody want to go to heaven? Amen. James 1 and 19 though. You got to do these things. Since the word was being given. That would change their generations. The church had to develop an ability to hear. This is the early church that James was speaking to. So. It would change that the word that was given was going to change generations. We know that's true because we're changed. Right? So the church had to develop an ability to what? Hear. When your emotions are louder than what's being taught to you, you'll fail. You'll fail. You got to be able to hear past your feelings. Amen. Women struggle with this because you are feelings based. Wives, you're feelings based. Always. So you got to depend on your husband's ability. Uh oh. You got to depend on his ability. But you boost you toot toot. I just have to go forth because. My goodness, this is the one right here. Yeah, because you've been taught by society and everything to be a boss, and you ain't, I, I ain't going to have no man. I ain't going to have no man do this. Ain't no man going to do that. Ain't no man going to hurt me. And this is a dumb thing. You try so hard to stop men from hurting you that you hurting all the men. <laughs> Look at your track record. You got an F on every paper. Will you get somewhere and stop God didn't build you like that. He didn't even build you to protect yourself. That's the problem. You're trying to protect yourself and you're taking the job of the protector. No man want no woman that'll bully him and boss him and push him all in there, shoving him. Telling him what to do all the time, telling him what to think. No! You got to be able to be quick. See, you got to be able to, wives, be swift to hear. I'm not going to even say slow to speak because I don't know if y'all can do that. <laughs> Just two out of three. Slow to wrath, <laughs> swift to hear. I don't want to make it too hard on y'all. I'll just give y'all a break today. Y'all getting a break today. Let's just get two. If we get two out of three, we'll be all right. <laughs> you can make it with two out of three. You, we, 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 can, we can live with that. Amen. <laughs> yeah. But if we can't receive the word, then we cannot help others. Amen. The sad part about this is you can't help your own children. If you sit in a church and dog the church out, when your children grow up, they won't have respect for it. Tell them, Jay. No, no, no. They won't have respect for it. It can't help them. It can't help them. Everything becomes optional because you made it optional. If it's even optional to show up at church and come, when they grow up, they'll have no church ethic whatsoever. Church will be completely optional, and most of the time, that option is no. So if you cannot allow the word to change, if we cannot allow the word to change us, then how will we ever win others? I put that on Instagram this morning. We're so busy taking care of ourselves all the time. Everything is about us. My childhood trauma. I grew up without my daddy. I didn't have this. Somebody uh, did this to me. Somebody did that. And we spent our whole life talking about what happened to us. And we can't help nobody. We can't even help our own children because we're still trying to deal with our trauma. 
Man, you better look at somebody and say, you better get over that. Get over it quick. Your children are growing up. Get over it quick. The devil is coming. Get over it quick. Jesus is coming. Get over it. Bible tells us, yes, there's a time to mourn. Yes, there's a time to be sorry. But then there's a time to have joy. There's a time to be happy. There's a time to have victory. There's a time to overcome. There's a time to graduate. There's time to mature. It's time to be better. A constantly talkative person cannot hear what anyone else says. And in like manner will not hear when God speaks to him. So James is saying be slow to speak or wait and assess your words before you let them out. If you cannot do this, you will live a life full of regret. Every time your head hit the pillar, you're thinking about what you wish you hadn't said. Second thing James said, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Being slow to anger is an attitude that believers must adopt. Quit getting angry so quick. Amen. You start talking about something and then you just... that old lip huff you know remember that dude that was about to fight but he really didn't want to fight he taking it out on his lip used to love when they did that Walter that means I'm finna win oh uh, yeah yeah a huffer But we got to adopt the attitude of being slow to anger because a wrathful heart births what? Not forgiveness. If we are to win others to Christ through the forgiving power of God, how can we be vengeful? Our example of forgiveness will produce an atmosphere of forgiveness and bring others into the faith through what? forgiveness third thing James said wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul receive with what meekness can you be meek we know you're strong you don't have to hit folks to prove you're strong yeah, we know you're smart. You don't have to tell everybody how smart you are. We know that if, if things had went a different way in your life, you'd probably be rich. You don't have to tell everybody that. Because you ain't rich. You need to shut up. Don't be telling me about money that you don't have. Well, I got more money that I don't have than money that you don't have. I can win. I can win that conversation. Why are you sitting up here telling me about money you don't have? I can make up money too. Oh yeah, well I have Solomon's money. That's where I'm going. I mean, if we're just talking about money we ain't got. That's not meek. <laughs> but that's not meek. That's not meek. You talking about yourself all the time. What you want to accomplish? What you going? That's not meekness. You will lose every spiritual battle like that. Because all the devil have to do is put up a mirror and show you what you don't have. Then you're going to feel some kind of way. Then when you don't get it, you done told everybody you was getting it. Now you feel some kind of way. Amen. And I like asking them, brother, where's that money? Where that car at, dude? You told me you was getting. Where is it? You didn't get it? What happened? You know, I'm we're going to finish this conversation. I'm not letting it go, Julian. I'm not letting it go, but you wasted 30 minutes of my time talking about this God. Where is it? (laughs) 
That's not meekness. Meekness is when you, man, it's, you have it under control. No matter how powerful you are, no matter how strong you are, no matter how smart you are, no matter how rich you are. Amen. You know, real r wealthy people, they don't have to wear it. Yes. Had a dude came in here like that. I mean, he wanted everybody to know he was rich. He came up to pray. He had Gucci shoes, Louis Vuitton pants, a uh, Prada belt, uh, I can't think of enough designers. He had them all. Red bottoms, black bottoms, red tops, tops, black. And he walking around looking like just an advertisement. I'm like, brother, you don't have to show everybody your money like that. Rings on everybody. You know, just that big old ring. Want to shake your hand and cut your hand. Hey, man. You cut me with that big blow pop ring you got on. Why? Why? What is this? This is church. <laughs> it's church. We're not in it talking about what we're going to get in church. Let's talk about getting the Holy Ghost. Let's talk about getting some love for one another. Let's talk about not falling out with one another all the time. Let's talk about loving, caring, sharing, keeping folks in good spirits. This ain't the pool hall. Why are we talking about that? That's not meekness. You know, when they used to meek in horses and prepare them for battle, they would take the horse and condition the horse to never get off course no matter what was coming his way. Have you ever noticed you watch some of the old footage, old movies, a horse just running into fire, running into battle, just running at you? Like, if I was that horse, I'd be like, Scott, I'm going the other way. They shoot arrows that way. But they would meeken the horse, meaning the horse was strong, powerful enough to pull him all the way, push him all the way through there. But to meeken him, he had to distance himself from what could hurt him. So he would have courage, power under control. See, <laughs> yeah, sometimes you got the ability to hurt somebody, to level them. Down. No, 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 no. You stay focused on the battle and walk through whatever comes your way. Not look to the left, not look to the right. Keep going. That's meekness. Jesus had to do that. Jesus could have sneezed and blew the world up. He could have clapped his hands and knocked everybody's head off. But he kept his power under control, stayed focused on the goal and he didn't let nothing nobody did to him change his trajectory amen that's meek and lowly like the savior look at somebody and say you got to be meek because meekness is able to save your soul the bible said meekness the meek will inherit Finally, James says that in order to be positioned for self-replication, we must lay aside moral filth. We must forsake sin and allow God's word to fill our hearts rather than the pleasures of the flesh. Nobody's trying to stop your fun. We're trying to redefine your fun so that your fun don't get you in trouble. Amen. Sin will get you in trouble. So sin can't be your fun. So we got to do away with the moral filth. We must forsake sin and allow God's word to fill our hearts rather than the pleasures of the flesh. Meekness is not weakness, but it is a teachable disposition that will allow God's word to saturate our being and do what? Change our lives. Ain't nobody in here bullying nobody. Hell, but we don't do that, do we? Nobody bullying you, embarrassing you in front of your wife and your husband. We ain't in here arguing and fussing it. We're not doing that. I treat you like the men you are. So all you have to be is meek. You know, hey, hey now I'm in control of my home. 
Because I'm, I'm not trying to interfere with that. That's your home. That's your kingdom. Yeah. But you still got to have a teachable disposition. Where you can say, you know what? Pastor was right. This is something I need to address. This is something I need to change. Amen. That's meekness. Thank you. Meekness is not weakness, but it is a teachable disposition. Once we have done these things, we have matured, listen, to a place where we can give birth to others spiritually. Because we're a church, and a church replicates. Amen? So you're going to give birth to someone. And I don't mean you go out and try to witness and look for somebody. No, no, no. It's most of the time, they're right in your house. Right next door. Right on your job. They're right there. Summary! Boy, this message blessed me. Good stuff. Children can't birth children. Amen? In nature, a person has to reach a certain age so their body can mature to a stage of childbearing. In nature. Well, James is teaching us the same principle but pertaining to spiritual childbearing. If we are to replicate ourselves by giving birth to others spiritually, then we must mature to a childbearing age spiritually. God has called us to be first fruits of a lineage of children that will be birthed through us. So we must position ourselves so that we can replicate the great work that God has done in us. Amen? Short summary. 1 Corinthians 4 and 14. I write not these things to shame you. I'm not preaching these things to shame you. But as my beloved sons, I warn you. I'm just trying to warn you. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, how many folks got a website where they teaching something from the Bible? Hang on. Amen. But everybody just preaching. Everybody got a ministry. My ministry. Hey, brother. Yeah, yeah. I started my ministry last. That ain't no ministry. You got one post with you preaching and the next one with your butt out. You got one post with you preaching and the next with you critiquing a movie. So that's your ministry. Your page is your ministry. That's, that's thousands of instructors. But you don't have many fathers. He said you don't have many fathers. And when he's speaking of fathers, he's talking about people that father people into the faith. Got all these instructors. But not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. This is Paul talking to this church. And this is me talking to y'all. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. In other words, do what I did. Bring somebody into the faith. Help somebody else. Don't make this about you only. How long are you going to work on yourself? How long are you going to be a problem? How long are you going to have a problem? When are you going to get the confidence to know what God wants you to do? When are you going to get the confidence to just have some on-the-job training? We all, see, y'all don't understand. All pastors, preachers, bishops, apostles, whatever they are, we all on the job training. Because we don't know everything, and we're not perfect, but we have the word to teach you. So we're on the job training. No man graduates from that. So it's time. It's time to give birth. Amen? Everyone stand to your feet.
This is a, just a grow up message. I mean, it's just time. I mean, you know, and, I, and, and maybe I'm to blame a little bit because I do preach a whole lot of messages dealing with us, bettering ourselves, being better, all of these things or whatever. And so maybe you got used to that and now every Sunday is about you and you applying it to you instead of helping other people. But you got to help others. We got to love one another. We can't be selfish with what we're getting in here. Somebody turns you on to the truth behind hip hop. Somebody gave you a video. Somebody gave you a website. Somebody did that. And they had planted a seed in your life that you're pleased with. So now it's time for you to do the same thing. So people that want strength in that area, I want you to just come up. Make this about someone else. I need to just go on and be okay. Be okay. You're coming up to be, oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. I've had surgery. I've had all these spiritual procedures, these spiritual surgeries, all this spiritual knowledge. I've done, I've heard all of this. I've, I've just, I'm okay now. Now I can go and help someone. I want to pray over you so that you can have that. That way, every time you come to God, it's not, oh, Lord, I just this, Lord. No. Sometimes you can go to the Lord. Hey, Lord, Ralph needs help. Sarah needs help. Sheila needs help. Father God, I speak healing. Healing on her. Healing on him. I said, I told y'all, Bishop, y'all pray for Bishop. Some of y'all just go start praying for him and then the prayer end up about you. Oh, but then me too, Lord, because I'm this. No, you need to be able to call his name out, speak healing on him, and then get up. Get up. The Bible said that Jesus healed ten, the ten lepers. But he said he spoke healing, gave them healing. But the Bible said they were healed as they went. So they weren't healed right when he said it. But on the way they were healed. Some of y'all got to get healed as you go. On your way. It's already been spoken. It's already been said over your life. Be healed. Now go on your way. Help somebody. Love some. Devote yourself to loving other people. That's my job 24-7. But y'all gonna help me. Y'all gonna help me. I, what? Y'all gonna help me. Can't do this. Look at all these people. You gotta help me. I need y'all to love these folks in here. Love folks in your family. Love folks on your job. Show them love. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you for this word that you've given us today. Thank you, Father God, for the truth that was in it. Thank you, Lord, for all the wisdom that was in it. Thank you, Lord, for the spark that was in it that will ignite something in our hearts and in our lives so that we will spend more time, less time focused on ourselves and more time focused on others. God, you've already brought us out. You've already healed us from certain things. You've already delivered us from things. You've already shown yourself mighty in our lives. So now it's time for us to go with that and bless someone. Bless someone. Bless someone. All that you've given us, God, is not just for us, but it's for others. All that you've blessed us with is not just for us. All that you've done is not just for us. Help us, God, to be a blessing. Come on, lift your hands up high. Help us to be a blessing in the name of Jesus. Anoint everyone, Father God, all over this building, all of the adamant believers, that love would exude from our beings. And Father God, help us to just position ourselves, be there for others in a way that you would so that we can resemble you. And Father, strengthen our church. Strengthen Adamant Believers Council. Strengthen the leaders. Strengthen the foundation. Protect us, Father God, from the attacks so that we can stand strong in this hour, united together in love, 
as your sacred body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hug somebody and say, I'm going to help somebody else. I'm going to help somebody this week. I'm going to show somebody love. I'm going to show folks what love is. I'm going to show them what love means. I'm going to show them what it means to exhibit godly love. Agape, unconditional love. I'm going to show the love of Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, I hear that song, PJ.